back to the Kupawa Crafts YouTube channel in 2021. Um, I'm going to do today a review of my Fab sewing machine. It's something that I've been meaning to do since um, December last year or November. I got the sewing machine I think in October and uh, yeah, I've been meaning to do this review because uh, some of you have asked me about it. So first of all, I wanted to let you know that I'm not an ambassador, uh, so I bought the sewing machine uh, because uh, basically I read some reviews, so I wanted to upgrade from the uh, previous sewing machine that I had and I wanted something a little bit more sturdy and something that could work for me. And after reading a lot online and reviews and talking to people owning this um, brand uh, and, um, you know, just searching for reviews online and on YouTube videos and, uh, you know, everywhere, I thought it was, you know, um, the machine for me. I also want to say that, of course, uh, this brand works or this specifically this machine works for me uh, I'm not happy with the brand's um, steps towards um, the inclusion of um, people with disabilities within the sewing community and I've read lately because you know I was off on social media for almost the whole of no December and I've been reading a few posts regarding um, how the brand is not including um, sewers with disabilities onto their research and they are claiming that they are working with someone when they are actually not um, so I'm trying to distance this review <laughs> from that situation because of course I don't agree with that situation but at the same time I want to I have the machine I'm not going to get rid of it and I'm not trying to promote it so I'm trying to give you an objective uh, review on the actual machine there are things that I like a lot there are things that I don't like that much um, but yeah I just wanted to say that before starting my review on the sewing machine <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's what I'm going to do today. I have a few things written down here and I want to show you as well on the actual machine how all some of the steps that I like the most or maybe the ones that I like the least uh, work or why I'm saying what I'm saying. Um, but before I start, I want to say that in general, well, this one is the Fab Quilt Ambition 630. And... Uh, I got it online here in the UK uh, from So Essential and um, even though it says quilt ambition uh, or quilt is not only for quilting because some people told me oh but can't you do dressmaking on the machine? Yes of course you can because I would never buy a sewing machine just for quilting. Um, the only thing is that it has some um, specifications uh, that work really well for quilting. So, for example, this part is bigger than your normal sewing machine, at least the one that I used to have. And then it has some stitches, really nice, you know, uh, for quilting and quite a lot of embroidery beads that I think you can use for quilting as well. So, it has some specifications, um, you know, for quilting, uh, um, but you can use it for anything. So yeah, I just wanted to clarify that. So even if you buy it uh, thinking, or, or if you are thinking on buying this machine and you're just like, well, it's a squirrel, no worries, you can make anything with it. So that's always good. So yeah, I'm gonna start now. I'm gonna move the camera. So I'm gonna uh, get closer because you don't need to see me all the time. And I'm gonna show you some of the bits that I really love and some of the bits that I don't love. That. Okay, so here we are. I'm gonna open this, yes, magic. So you have all the stitches there. So I just wanted to clarify that I'm not going to actually explain how to use the sewing machine. There are quite a few really nice tutorials on YouTube that I follow myself, apart from, of course, reading the instructions. Um, so yeah, I'm not going to just explain all those things, but the bits that I like the most. So I think that the thing that I uh, liked you know straight away was that it's 
a heavy machine I mean of course you're not going to keep on moving your machine around a lot um, so to me it feels like a strong and sturdy that's something that I really wanted on my new machine because the previous one was I don't know, not, not that reliable. And I always felt like when I was doing uh, sewing maybe lots of um, layers of fabric that, um, you know, it, it kept moving around. And uh, when I put any sort of pressure, it just, you know, couldn't handle it. And this one, it just feels strong. So that's something that I really like. And there is something else, which is the, that I, I'm, I imagine that you know about the faff machines is that and now I need to move you again so here at the back is uh, it's got the um, walking foot just let me just yeah just there you see this little bit in here so the walking foot is already uh, added to the sewing machine so you don't need to buy an extra walking foot to um, you know put it like a normal presser foot so you've got this little black thing in here that I hope you're seeing um, so that that's great because you already have it there and um, you just, as you can see, pull it down and it just clicked uh, underneath your normal presser foot and then you are ready to use it. So that's, that's I think, really good. That's something that I particularly liked um, because it's already there. You don't need to install it. And I have to say that on my previous sewing machine, maybe this has happened to you as well. The walking foot was, it made an incredible noise. And all the time I needed to uh, screw again the needle because it got loose and then screw as well the um, the, the walking foot because it got uh, loose all the time. It's like, I don't know, it couldn't handle all the all the walking um, and sewing at the same time anyway so that's that's much much better um, another thing that I liked maybe it sounds silly and I'm just grabbing the pedal <laughs> so my previous sewing machine didn't have like these silicone bits in here um, so I don't know maybe it was just my old sewing machine it was a little bit crap regarding that, but I really like that it's got these silicone bits in here so it doesn't slip on the floor, so it's, it's great. Another thing that I like is like it works with several layers. So I've made actually, when I tested this machine, I made a coat and uh, the toasty jacket, which had like three layers and it was really really thick one the outer layer was waterproof and then i had the uh, lining and then i had the um thin sulate layer so it was really thick and it managed just fine so that's great uh, of course i've been testing it as well um with several layers and it works so that's something that i also appreciate from from this machine um another thing that i like Maybe other machines have this, but I don't know. I just particularly like it. So there is a little button in here which places your needle down. As you can see, there is highlighted. Let me just put a little bit more light in there. So um, it just keeps your needle down every time you stop sewing. So imagine that I am sewing. I just stop and it keeps it down. So that's great when you need to do corners, for example. So, and I pretty much leave it like this all the time when I'm sewing. Of course, it's got the automatic um, threader, the no threader, no, the automatic cutting. The threader as well, it's got this, but I will talk about that later because it's on the not so positive things list. Um, so yeah, it's got the automatic cutting um, uh, of the thread and that's great, but my old sewing machine also had it, so anyway, that's fine. Um, then, uh, I think it's really good with um, button holes and you can see here I've tested it um, a while ago let me see if you can see it well um, there so I think button holes look much better than with my previous sewing machine I have to say that they will I think that they will never look like 
you know, super professional ones because I remember some time ago I went to London um, to do the buttonholes for my Oslo coat and I went to this um, really, you know, specialized place uh, in, in Soho and this man just had like, I don't know, 10 sewing machines just for buttonholes and they look amazing they were just perfect so i think of course you're not going to reach that level of perfectionist um but um i think these are at least better than the ones um i used to do on my old sewing machine and i have to also say that uh, because here at the top you can see that this machine has like i think it's 201 <laughs> stitches of course i'm not going to use all of those but i discovered that the stitch which is number 31 if you don't have an overlooker i did this as well previously um so that you could see uh it does this of course i didn't do it right at this at the edge but it does a pretty decent um sort of overlook you know looking a stitch i think it looks pretty nice and i actually use it for um a few projects so um if you don't have a, an overlocker and um you know you got this man you get this machine then you can use this and i think there are other kind of overlooking stitches there so uh, yeah you can use any of those so pretty happy with that as well now I'm going to go on to the not so nice things um, that I, you know, didn't like as much. Um, let's start with uh, preserve. Oh yeah, the preserve foods. I don't know if it's just me. First of all, when you change your preserve food, you need to press press it down, as you can just see here. That makes me a little bit concern every time I do it because I feel I'm going to break something um, which I am not but it really scares me so you need to press it down and then you know when you want to change it and I don't know if this is the way it's supposed to be but I find um, yeah I'm changing the lighting all the time um, it just it feels a little bit loose but, you know, there is no screw here that I can, you know, use. I think it is just the way it is. Maybe, I don't know, to make it more mobile. <laughs> I don't know. That felt strange. Another thing that I didn't like is when, or, well, at least because it involves um, using a screwdriver, is changing the needle. So you have a screw here. So to change the needle, you need to, to use a screwdriver. I thought that was a little bit annoying because my old sewing machine, you just, you know, use your hand. But at the same time, I have to say that my old sewing machine, the needles came loose all the time when I was sewing, maybe it's faster or something like that. So I had to all the time manually screw it. So maybe... Maybe that's why if you use a screwdriver, then it, you know, is is more is safer there and it doesn't move as much or gets loose. Um, another thing that I don't like is this. So, um, when I am sewing, here I've got my reverse button. I'm just gonna show you. So if I start sewing and then press it. That's fine. It doesn't stay pressed. But if I, by mistake, press it before, it just goes. So it's pressed all the time, even if you're not pressing it. And that annoys me because it has happened more than once and then two times and three times that I forgot to unpress it and then it went all the way back. So I don't know, maybe it's something silly, but I didn't like that. <laughs> Then I have to say that the plate, the metallic plate here, um, I don't know. I think that I'm used to the markings of my old sewing machine. Um, I find it a little bit hard to follow the one centimeter because it's more like up there and the 1.2, which happens a lot with American patterns. Um, 
1.2, you know, I, I think it usually is like 12 millimeters or something like that, not the 1.5, but the one before. And it is quite high up there. So if I start sewing here, I'm not really sure if I'm lining up correctly with that seam allowance. I know it may sound silly, but um, yeah, I, I'm not used to this plate exactly. So I think maybe I need to put some washi tape or something just to make sure that I follow the correct uh, seam allowance. Uh, then, yeah, the thing that I didn't like at all was the automatic threader. So my problem was on my old sewing machine, I also had my automatic threader and it always worked. But something happened at some point with this one. On one hand, I don't like that the movement is not all the way down straight, but it, it just, you can see how it changes direction. So it's like going down and then it starts circling like that. At some point, because within, you know, how an automatic threader works, there is like a tiny metallic thing that grabs the thread through the hole of the needle. So that metallic thing that is supposed to go through the eye of the needle just moved, basically, because it wanted to. And my partner had to help me to actually move it back to the center. That was really annoying because it was just like after, I don't know, five times using the sewing machine. So I've come to learn that it's really um, sensitive. So I need to do it really gently. And just as you can see, there's like here, there's like a little noise. And now I know that is there, but now I think that it's not, you can see. Um, I just have to like almost do it manually there. I know that it's right there and now it's going to hold the thread, but that really annoyed me because I mean, what's happening? Why, why is that happening? I don't know. Um, so it's not, I feel like the automatic threader is not very reliable and it can break easily, which is annoying. Um, and last, I want to say that some people have talked about um, fabs making noises. I've heard a few people saying that. I don't feel that way. Um, I think it is, I mean, it's a sewing machine, it makes noise. Um, and maybe it's because I'm comparing it to the one that I used to have, but it doesn't make that much noise. So to me it's fine. I don't know. Uh, maybe for you it's not. I'm, I'm, I'm really not sure. But um, to me it's fine. So it doesn't make, you know, like a massive amount of noise. I'm going to just do a little bit of sewing so you can hear it. Um, I don't know. It feels okay to me. So it's fine. I mean, I've had my previous sewing machine making so much more noise so to me is okay um so yeah that's it basically uh i'm gonna move the camera now so yeah that's it basically uh as you can see it's quite a light review i just wanted to focus on the things that i like the most and the things that i disliked a lot or maybe i didn't like that much and as I said, this is just my personal view and um, yeah, I'm not happy with all the things happening with, with the brand, but I wanted to focus on um, the things that this machine, you know, work for me, the things that doesn't work, the things that don't work. Um, so yeah, I hope that it was helpful and if you have any questions about this specific model, please let me know. And also, I think it is, I know these times right now it's almost impossible to go to it's not almost impossible at least in the uk it's impossible to go to a shop and try a sewing machine but um if you can try the sewing machine which is the ideal thing to do i would say research online a lot ask the brand for um you know all the things that you may need to know if um if it would work for you and keep asking people, uh, reading reviews, and um, there are quite a few uh, nice YouTube tutorials on how to use this specific model and other fabs uh, in general that I think they are really good because they take you through every single bit on the sewing machine. I watched like quite a few of those before buying this one. 
so yeah just make sure that you are happy with with it if you cannot try it which is i know really annoying because now we can't um but yeah if you have any questions just send me uh or write on the comments uh or just contact me through social media um as well so thank you for watching i hope it was useful and i will be back next week with a little fabric haul which i don't like that word but it's a mini fabric haul because i've been buying some fabrics to make themes uh, for 2021 and also for my next uh, pattern so i will show you those fabrics and yeah i hope to see you very soon thank you